Dr. Majid, throughout his years of experience and research in clinical nutrition, Dr. Azmat is a firm advocate of natural medicine and practices preventing, treating, and eradicating disease through nutrients present in food. We're really grateful to have Dr. Saab here with us today. Um, another thing I just want to say is that I have a special interest in this topic, and I think that the world now is seeing a resurgence of interest in uh, natural cures and natural yeah. medicine. And that's because we've all, I think, at some point in our lives, we've all had some very bad experiences with uh, what we call traditional medicine in the sense of Western or Western medicine, what, what we call Western medicine today. So Dr. Saab, thank you so much for making time to address us. And also thank you, especially to Mustafa, who's your right hand for organizing this with us. I'll let you begin. Thank you, thank you. I, I, I welcome you all. And I certainly hope that, uh, I'll be, that I'll be able to make uh, some difference to everyone's life who's here on board with me these, today. Well, uh, to start with, I must say, you know, uh, nutritional medicine is the truth. Uh, there is a there is a old saying which says all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. And third, it is accepted as being self-evident. So nutritional medicine is, is at the third stage where it is being accepted as, as, as a self-evident that uh, yes, there is a big role for nutritional medicine in our lives uh, because uh, we have come to this conclusion that uh, no amount of uh, allopathic medicine can or no amount of uh, regular conventional medicine can, can fix the main issues that humanity is facing these days. I must say, no wealth accumulated in our lifetime can compensate us for, a, for, for the premature failure of our bodies. And what is happening is that we are seeing lots of people having issues at such an early stage, which we, we were not seeing even in people as old as 70. Our present system, the problem is that our present system recognizes disease when it has reached crisis proportion. This is, this is tantamount to saying that fire is only a fire when it has burst through the roof. When in, in actuality, it was a fire when a fire when the cigarette bud began to smolder in the rug. So we need to look for clues that can lead us to preventing disease through nutritional medicine. It, it so often happens that our vision of search is towards the horizon, little realizing that what we are seeking lies at our feet. This is literally true for nutritional medicine. We look for remedies in drug while completely overlooking the body's need for missing nutritional links. The cause of malfunction, and I would say more than 90% of the time, is deficiency, whereas the effect of the malfunction may be a disease. In such an instance, the true method of treatment is to rectify the cause and not to quell the effect with the drugs and leave the cause untreated. Uh, I must say, the idea behind medicine is the prevention of disease. Nutritional medicine and the necessity for a curative treatment There are many Nobel Prize winners who have been doing research in nutritional field and who have come up with many, uh, many, many things that we all don't know. For example, majority of disease that is these days in this world, including, uh, I would say communicable and non-communicable disease, degenerative diseases like cardiovascular conditions or metabolic disorders like uh, diabetes and obesity and stuff, or 
or communicable diseases like uh, this COVID-19. All of these diseases can be handled with nutritional medicine. The trouble is that we think entirely in terms of a disease and rarely we look at the root causes. We ignore the opportunities for making people healthier by not investigating them. As a result of this attitude, I must say, uh, the most fundamental weapon in the fight against disease, which is most ignored by the modern medicine, is nutritional factors, which we call nutraceuticals, found in many foods, uh, foods and uh, uh, all the edible items that we have in nature. Only by understanding the wisdom of the body shall we be able to, I think, maintain the mastering of disease and pain, which will, which can enable us to relieve the burden of 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 this uh, of this from mankind. Let me let me share something with you. Uh, in the early 1900s, Center of Disease Control reported around nine, more than 90% of deaths as natural deaths in USA. By the year 2000, this is, I'm talking about disease statistics of US. Well, it is uh, uh, available all over the net and you can see it for yourself. Around 90% of population is victim to degenerative diseases like heart disease, like diabetes, like cancer. So what is happening? Where is the miracle of modern, modern medicine? It is my belief, and this is seconded by the science, hundreds and thousands of scientists who have worked tirelessly over the last 100 years, and this research that is lying in the annals of uh, many journals and stuff has not been explored fully. And therefore, I think uh, the magnificent, whenever the magni this magnificent human body breaks down, it can be made whole again by the correct diet. Knowledge of the per the, the knowledge of this perplexing problem of disease and diet has been gained through many years of study and experience. This is not limited to me or someone here, you know, like who happens to be a big expert. This is all available. Uh, this is all peer-reviewed scientific literature available out there, which is not being used for the good of mankind. For example, let me give you something that uh, uh, we are beginning to see, I would say, how every illness, each faltering loss of vitality and well-being is the result of a disturbance or an imbalance in some metabolic pathway, rather than a single specific cause. These imbalances can be rectified with nutritional supplementation a good diet and a lifestyle. In other words, extra supplementation of the raw material found in the food. We right now are at a stage in our life in the humanity is, is, is at a stage where we have extremely uh, well-researched principles and, and, and things and diagnostics available which can second these all these uh, uh, facts. So I would say uh, the nutrition attempts to supply your body with what it maintains, which it needs to maintain its own health. And if I would say, okay, what is it that we can do for some individual who has, who wants to feel better what is it that someone can do right away in order to get control of his life, sagging energy levels? The first and the foremost thing I'll say is that you need to get your digestion well. Because every nutrition, every nutraceutical, 
that needs to get digested and then get transported to the organ that requires it. So uh, nutrition is a far greater factor in men's biochemistry and health than pharmacology. Indigestion is not caused by a deficiency of antacids. It is caused by deficiency of probiotics. We need to have a healthy gut. When we talk about a healthy gut, we talk about we want to have a good supply of probiotics. When we talk about high blood pressure, this doesn't mean that high blood pressure is caused by a deficiency of beta blocker. And migraine is not the result of an aspirin deficiency. Yet current, currently medical prescriptions would have us believe otherwise. Any person who has a medical condition has a disturbed body chemistry and a bad digestion. So my, uh, the first and the foremost thing I would say is to get your digestion right. And we need to make sure that things that affect our lives, that affect our body's biochemistry, we should totally eliminate them from our, from our routine. Few examples that I can state would be uh, refined sugar, uh, refined flour, that is bakery, cookies and cakes and stuff like that, and then white polished rice. We can instead opt for uh, raw brown sugar as sweetener instead of white sugar. We can opt for whole wheat, unrefined whole wheat or any grain that you would like to have or a, or a plethora of grains or a, or a mixture of grains, that is all right. We need to make sure that instead of white polished rice, we opt for brown rice, unpolished brown rice. We need to make sure that we, need, we start cooking our food in unrefined oil, be it mustard oil, be it extra virgin cold press olive oil, be it can be rapeseed oil, it can be soya bean oil, it can be sunflower oil, but it needs to be unrefined and it needs to be cold pressed. So we need to move to we need to move to nature. We need to uh, come close to nature instead of having foods that are preserved, packaged, because there are a whole bunch of preservatives that are added to them, which cause multiple issues. I have, I have never seen so many cases of infertility in young boys and girls that I am seeing in last 10 years of my practice. And I, I hate to say this, but usually I see this, these infertility cases in people who are very well off, but who are not aware on what to eat and what to exclude from their life. So, so these are few things I think that we need to encourage. And uh, of course, I would never like to say that we don't want to uh, uh, benefit from modern, modern medicine, you know, like uh, absolutely uh, our surgeons and you know, like emergency medicine, they they do a fantastic, fantastic thing. But for long term healthcare, we need to make sure we make our body whole. Uh, we need to sleep well. And I I would like to tell all my audience who who happen to be here that uh, sleeping before twelve is very very critical for good health. Uh, all the hormones. All our body's wear and tear repair mechanism kicks in at night. So there is a, I have seen lately since this arrival of COVID that people tend to, you know, sleep, have late nights and they tend to gain weight. So I think it is very, very important to sleep on time to make sure that we uh, our, our body's circadian rhythm, which is so important for our long-term well-being you know, like uh, keeps itself healthy. Dr. Saab, up, uh, you were talking about uh, whole wheat. 
अब कैन यू जस्ट एक्सप्लेन टू अस प्लीज दैट यू नो हम ये सुनते हैं कि ग्लूटेन इज अ पॉइजन एंड ग्लूटेन इज बैड फॉर अस कैन यू टेल अस अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट ग्लूटेन एंड व्हाट इज योर ओपिनियन ऑन ग्लूटेन वेल आई हैव लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल हु कम टू मी हु विल पुट ऑफ ग्लूटेन बट आई टेंड टू रिस्टोर द न्यूट्रिएंट्स व्हिच आर रिस्पांसिबल फॉर डाइजेस्टिंग ग्लूटेन इफ आई वुड हैव अ person who is 60 or 70 years of age and who doesn't have his who, who who's not hoping to be a father or a mother you know like of course you know like after menopause you can't be but who, in in early ages i tell people not to leave gluten because gluten is something which keeps our keeps our fertility you know like healthy so eliminating gluten is 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 doesn't help us doesn't uh, uh you know stop the disease progression people who are allergic to gluten usually they have they have pathogenic growth in their stomach they should be deworming themselves they should make sure they don't have h pylori infection in their stomach they also need to make sure they have good stomach acid levels we also need to make sure that people don't have fungal overgrowth in our stomach because these are all these pathogens we all have them but we need to have them in 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 certain limits when they go beyond those limits and when they invade our upper part of our gut our digestion gets limited we don't get the nutrients we need to survive you know like in a healthy way it's it's, it's just so so i think it's better to fix the digestion fix the stomach acid if there is too much stomach acid we can lower that if there is too little stomach acid then we can even fix that i think fixing the root cause is is much better than eliminating gluten altogether so doctor sir one more question hum actually most most of us are suffering from um, lifestyle diseases right like as you mentioned like this is high blood pressure heart disease um uh, kidney issues mostly i think many young people are now pre diabetic jo pehle ke zamane mein nahi hota tha now we are seeing more and more people are pre diabetic youngsters um can you tell us like I, I, you know m- my view on this is that you know a lot of us we can like our bodies are amazingly intelligent and the body is able to heal itself but i think by the way that we eat and the way that we live we are constantly poisoning our body in such a way that uh it's not able to recover it's not able to fix itself because as it's fixing itself we're poisoning poisoning it some more what what's your opinion on this okay uh when i treat diabetes i like to fix the insulin ka signature ji remember remember one thing we need to have healthy insulin levels in order to have healthy glucose levels for example let me give you an example and healthy 18 year old boy would have 5 units of insulin that would metabolize 80 units of glucose and somebody who is not healthy he might have only 80 or 90 units of glucose but his insulin might be 25 or 30 or 40 or 50 units what what that tells us that the person who doesn't have his glucose fasting beyond a certain range he is not diagnosed as diagnosed as diabetes but we know that in order to prevent this diabetes from happening we need to fix his insulin ka signature when we say insulin ka signature we need to make sure that pancreas is producing healthy insulin uh let me tell you and for example hi amounts of glucose is a symptom the root cause is is insulin and sometimes we see people having loads of insulin in their system but they have high glucose levels what is happening this is a phenomenon phenomena we call insulin resistance and what is insulin resistance uh i think uh, the way i teach my students you know i would i would tell you that we have billions of cells in our body every cell in our body has a, a, has a furnace inside it 
and this furnace burns glucose and fat and everything. And this cell, for example, let's uh, uh, suppose for a for a second that this cell looks looks like a football. And on those on on a football, we have these we have these patches. Insulin comes, and what it does is it it goes and it knocks those patches, which are windows on that cell. Those patches open up and the glucose moves in. What happens is that this, this, this window on that football is stuck. Body needs so body keeps on secreting insulin in order to get that glucose inside that cell where it can get burned. But it doesn't happen. Why? because this is a phenomena we call insulin resistance mm -hmm. and this happens when this happens when we when we take refined food uh, for a long periods of time by refined food we mean uh, bakery items by refined food i mean uh, uh, these long life milks uh, mm -hmm. sold on 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 supermarkets which are not refrigerated Similarly, these tea whiteners uh, and coffee coffee whiteners those are uh, those also cause you know lots of insulin resistance. And then nitrosamines nitrosamines are are substances which are uh, which are produced when we when we uh, take processed meat, especially I don't know corned beef. Uh, people all over the uh, in Pakistan we call it hunter beef. Uh, in uh, sausages and stuff like that. So all of these items, they, 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 they cause uh, cellular level damage and which causes insulin resistance. And uh, so we need to eat right. We need to make sure we need to shun refined food. We need to move towards whole food, unrefined food. And I, uh, if one thing I can say that you know, everyone should do, not one, I would say three, four things. This is everyone who is hearing me out and who want to benefit from this meat. I think the first and the foremost thing would be to uh, eliminate uh, refined oil, to eliminate white sugar, absolutely eliminate white refined flour in bakery, you know, like which we are so fond of. And then we need to take white rice very often, you know, uh, not very often, you know, once in a while, I would say we can take brown rice, but we can't take white rice. Uh, I would say we need to get our protein up. So there are so many things that, but these three, four things, I think everybody should be, should, should be aiming to incorporate in their lives. Thank you so much, Dr. Saab. That, that was really helpful. Uh, Harun Uncle, would you do you have any questions for Dr. Saab? Would you like to ask any questions? Uh, yes, Doctor uh, Doctor Saab, I wanted to ask you is that overall this uh, uh, this uh, um, benefits what we get? Uh, is it too late for people who have already crossed the ages of 50, 60? And how does the uh, the uh, uh, improvement can be done? by implementing uh, uh, such of these uh, uh, ways of uh, making it uh, easier and uh, the implementation by changing the complete diet and the way of living to uh, will it will it uh, help in such a way that i mean as the age grows does it help or is it to be implemented at a younger age no it helps it helps uh, incredibly you know it helps if it anybody who is eating you know, no matter how old he is, who is physically active, and who can, who can, who, who is taking normal food, can 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 make these changes. And how do we go about them? For example, for me to suggest someone to take some some nutrient or to to follow a certain lifestyle, I tell everybody what healthy lifestyle is. <laughs> to take certain diet, you know, like we need to get some investigations done. For example, if somebody tells me. I am pre-diabetic and I am 60 years of age. I would investigate their digestion first. And then I would start restoring those nutrients which went missing in the first place. Jinke na hone ki wajah se he became diabetic. 
and uh, allah subhanahu taala has made our body such uh, such a resilient thing that when those missing links are supplied we see an an, an incredible uh, change as a matter of fact people uh, i have had these comments that we think we have been born again so so this is not limited to age it is uh, you need to be able to discipline yourself uh, i think for example anybody who wants to benefit for a nutritional regime must do breakfast breakfast is the most important part of our day we must uh, uh, have breakfast so i tell everyone who wants to uh, uh, make these changes that start by having a good breakfast and then you know start eliminating all those things that contain preservatives that have white sugar as a matter of fact you know like when i used to be a student in us we used to use alkylated sugar to 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 induce infertility and impotency in male and female uh, uh, mice so uh, since that day you know i i made sure that i would never have them and and lately we've been hearing and there are hundreds and thousands of studies that these things they feed infections they feed carcinogenic growth they they engage our immune system unnecessarily so i think uh, it is absolutely important to go back to nature and and uh, start treating our stomach space as the most expensive piece of real estate in this world we need to watch what we put in our mouth uh it's uh, i Uh, i i hate to think you know like we would eat anything or uh, i i i would i would never do that you know i would like to know that the thing i am eating is going to benefit me or not ji ji thank you so much dr saab we are almost at the end of our um of our allotted time today i just want to ask agar if anybody wants to get in touch with you uh how who shall we contact and where can we send through our questions i'm sure we're going to organize many more webinars with you this topic is massive and i i know that uh, many people have really enjoyed this um uh, this brief presentation by you so if we have further questions how can our uh, our members get in touch with you for example uh, we do uh, i have patients from all over the world you know anybody who wants to use our services he um, he should contact me we have our i think mustafa would give you my email mustafa or uh, umar who work with me uh, they should they will be providing you with an email and a and a phone number and uh, people can get in touch with me they can send in their existing investigations send me a note that this is these are my issues and these are my existing investigations you will hear back from me i will go through those investigations and i then please do include your phone number i'll be calling you if i need to ask you further questions if not uh, i'll be asking you to do few more investigations uh, it is uh, easier for me to treat people who are uh, based in uh, india dubai abu dhabi uh, sri lanka because we can get test done usually you know we have many service laboratories available in usa it is difficult because there are insurance regulations and they would not test you for uh, uh for for the kind of things that that i am asking they can be easily tested anywhere else in the world and after i receive those tests then i then we do analyze them then we make a plan a nutrient based plan we we give you these things you can't eat these things you should be eating and these are the nutrients you should be incorporating in your diet and these plans usually are for 8 weeks 10 weeks 12 weeks depending on each person's own biochemistry and uh, then they then we need to redo test and we then compare we do a comparative analysis that okay, this is the baseline this is what was administered and this is what the results are we need to go we need to step on the gas or we need to take things back we do it two three four times and then we are able to tell a person that these are the nutrients that you will be needing for the rest of your life this is the diet that you should be eating and this is what that you should be avoiding jazakallah uh, so much uh, as well uh, sir uh, yes yes ma'am yeah uh, 
हेलो डॉक्टर सलाम जी वालेकुम सलाम जानवर हियर एंड आई जस्ट वांट वन क्वेश्चन टू बी आंसर्ड Should not use it for for its uh, sweetness. They should be using it for its healing power. Honey ka puri dunia mein you can find bee pollen. Out of honey they extract this bee pollen, and this bee pollen is literally a miraculous substance that I I would suggest. It is such provides such a wide base of nutrients that. it has been 40 years then every year we find more nutrients in bee pollen so i would suggest that people who want to use honey they should when who are diabetic they should use bee pollen and if somebody who happens to be pre diabetic it is much better to use honey than stevia or anything else and how much fruit sugar damages well fruit sugar also goes and makes glucose there is no doubt about that but usually fruit sugar most fruit some fruits not with standing most fruits have a high not don't have that much of a high glycemic index as white sugar so i would suggest that if somebody is diabetic and he wants to enjoy a bit of fruit and it's 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 not reached crisis proportions yet i would suggest that they should take fruit at lunch time they should not be eating fruit at dinner number 1 and all diabetics all diabetics they should start using cinnamon let me tell every one of you that ceylon cinnamon the cinnamon the cinnamon that comes from sri lanka ha- happens to have the widest potential against correcting even insulin resistance it can help fix diabetes may insulin ka signature and it can lower it needs to be used over a period of time but let me tell let me share one more thing with you i am sure many many young ladies might be watching this if cinnamon is taken for a long period of time it acts as a birth control so anybody trying to go for a baby should not be using cinnamon other than that cinnamon can be used very effectively and uh, it happens it can be used for weight loss uh it does wonders it does wonders so this is something that people can use and how much cinnamon and someone should use uh it depends upon the level of sugar you 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 see in in in, in fasting usually one by 3 teaspoon 1/4 of a teaspoon for long term consumption is considered a good amount Jazakalla so much Dr Saab it was really an honor to have you here um sure, thank yeah. you for your time and thank you to Mustafa as well uh, we'll just close Harun uncle would you like to give the uh, closing um, the thank you note and then can i ask one yeah. question to Dr Azmik please ji sure uh, so uh, as you said the white wheat is not good white flour there are some other supplement like ragi flowers or barley or chickpeas are these can be replaced besides a white roti like besan roti or something or it has no no effect on no no you yes yes you can absolutely you can use barley porridge barley porridge is good for people who have allergies Gar- barley acts as an immune modulator barley is a fantastic thing to have and i would tell everyone if barley ka, ka naam came up ke they should be having barley porridge in breakfast absolutely yeah. fantastic thing to have that's what you yeah okay and second question is like for the breakfast nowadays everybody says granola do you think granola is better than any other kind of uh, thing no like barley breakfast, is the best corn flour or something or granola no. has no 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 barley is the best corn flour okay. like talbina yes. like we use in talbina like prophet muhammad yes. used to use talbina yes yes or about absolutely. the milk that third question is about milk Nowadays, everybody says the regular milk is not good, replaced by almond milk or coconut milk 
what's your views about that? Oh, I find in IBS, especially the person with IBS. Yes, 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 yes. I, I, in the earlier part of my conversation, I told people that you know, like, gut is the most important thing that we need to manage. Let me tell you something that we should not be eliminating milk. Absolutely not. Agar if somebody cannot digest milk, it is not the ye milk ka kasoor nahi hai. It is because they have got something going bad with their digestion. And what they need to do then? For example, if somebody can't take milk, they need to start with yogurt. And you need to start with small amounts of yogurt. Start with a teaspoon and increase it slowly. Instead of, instead of uh, um, taking a whole cup of milk, I would suggest that, you know, like move slowly. Take, and there is another thing. If you can't digest milk, there is a thing called milk digesting enzyme, lactase. If you can't produce enough lactase, then we shouldn't, we put milk, absolutely not. Milk is such an important well. Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he went to for miraj, and he was uh, he was offered uh, a drink, and he was offered three choices, and he took he he opted for milk, and Hazrat Jibrail alaihi salam said that you have made the best choice. So let me tell you, the milk is a fantastic thing to have. We need to keep keep milk a part of our our routine. And for some reason, if you can't have milk, this tells me that something is wrong with digestion. And it can be fixed. I have had hundreds and thousands of people who I've seen over the years who were not able to have milk. And uh, we got them going on milk, and they're doing very well now. Thank you so much, Dr. Sir. It was very important to us or for me and for everyone else. And thank, thank you, you Auntie. Yeah, that was an important <laughs> question. I'm just aware of Dr. Saab's time. Uh, he, uh, had, uh, he was only avail available for half an hour. So okay, can I okay. just request just before we end, can everyone just turn on their camera so we can take a picture, please? Uh, oh, sorry, before that, uh, Sada? Sada? G, G, G. Uh, I have one small question uh, somebody asked uh, was that, uh, is the milk which is supposed to be lactose free or a normal full fat milk? What is that doctor says that would be? Because what we get in this uh, part of the world is that we don't get the fresh milk what we are looking for. So uh, uh, in such a case, lactose free or full fat? What do you suggest, doctor? I think we should, lactose free is, you know, like we, if we can't digest, then probably, you know, it's, uh, it's essential, but Ideally, it should be it should be full fat milk, and full yeah, fat, yeah. and full fat, milk. and it should be the milk that is refrigerated. If you look, I am no many people must be living in big cities and you, you can't find uh, uh, fresh milk. So only buy milk which has got a three day shelf life. I believe you know that is the milk yes. to go for. Yes. Excuse yes. me. Still, no, no, no. Well, I, I am I'm available for another 5-10 minutes. Any more questions that you can ask me? Yes. Excuse me, Dr. Sir. G. Hello. G. Uh, milk uh, doubt is coming to take milk. Because here we inject cows. We inject karte hai, hormones. Inject karte hai. So this is the reason why we are afraid to take this milk. Achha, let, me, let me share something with you. Okay, when the cows are injected with, uh, with oxytocin, usually, you know, like the, for, for this, uh, okay, they, they generate more milk. Uske traces jo hai, wo milk mein bahut limited pae jate. So I think uh, even if we, if, we, if we get, I am absolutely against this, this, uh, this, this hormonal injection. But iske itne limited iske wo pae jate hain ke we can we can we can take it we can still take it. Iske main aapko ek aur ek aur bhi baat batata chalu you know like uh, this uh, uh, is hormone se ke for example I, if you remember ke in SARS COVID one you know like uh, jo ke early two thousands mein hua tha aur uske baad bird flu bhi uske baad aaya tha. If you remember, there were so many birds were culled all over the this this region, 
बट लेट मी टेल यू कि अगर इफ अ चिकन इज इज हैज गॉट यू नो लाइक बर्ड फ्लू और और एनी एनी इसी किस्म की कोई इन्फेक्शन इट डजेंट पास इट ऑन टू इट्स एग्स अल्लाह सुबहाना तला न्यू इन इज इन्फिनेट मर्सी के मेरे बंदों के पास कोई लैब नहीं होगी एवरीबडी कांट क्रैक ओपन एन एग एंड यू नो स्टार्ट इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग ये इन्फेक्टेड तो नहीं है सो so, एग uh, के बारे में भी मैं ये बताता चलू कि इट इज टाइम के वी शन दिस दिस के जी योग इज नॉट गुड योग इज एक्सट्रीमली गुड फॉर हार्ट पेशेंट्स योग कंटेन्स एच डी एल और योग को कंडेम किया गया था नाइनटीन फोर्टीज में एंड इट वॉज कंडेम्ड बिकॉज ऑफ सम रीजन इन ड्यूरिंग सेकेंड वर्ल्ड वॉर but since we have got diagnostic equipment that can tell us okay, what exactly is contained in yolk we now know that yolk is absolutely essential part of our diet so do even heart patients and if somebody can't digest egg it is because of their digestive issues any more question i have two questions dr वेरी लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम I would suggest if you want to use coconut oil, you know, you can use it for twice in a week. Couple of days you should be using white butter or desi ghee, and couple of days you should be using extra virgin cold press olive oil or mustard oil or rapeseed oil. My personal. I have favorite. one question. Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Shana from. Na, I am Dr. Shana from Pakistan. I want to ask you one question: That what is the uh, uh, connection between PCOs and the farmy eggs and farmy chicken? Can you please explain it? Ji, bilkul. Well, what is happening in this world is that all refined food is estrogenic in nature. And what is this estrogenic food doing? It is not only chicken; it is the white sugar. chicken has been made the scapegoat because uh, chicken industry was probably expendable it is the white sugar that is causing the polycystic ovaries pandemic i would say and we have seen this in in animal models and they were not fed chicken they were fed white sugar so i would suggest that chicken can be consumed in moderation and it sh- it should not be the meat of choice can be consumed on a weekly basis but i think we should be more focused on 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 fish and mutton in food uh well absolutely there is no doubt that there is a adulteration on a mass level Uh, the labels they don't uh, carry the correct information on all the boxes and that is even true for western countries so we need to be careful and uh, i would like to suggest that you know like uh, organic or inorganic you know like i think organic is a hoax if somebody can find organic you know well and good if you can't if you can get fresh vegetables uh regardless of uh, pesticides and and fertilizers they can be taken uh, no nobody should stop you that these have got pesticides and these have been grown with fertilizers let me tell you one thing in order to clear vegetables and fruits from all residue the best thing someone can do is to place these vegetables and and uh, and fruits in saline water with saline water i mean uh, take a tub of water throw a couple of teaspoons of salt and these couple of teaspoons of salt would 
create you know like uh, the necessary environment for for a fruit and vegetable to be to be absolutely clear, clear of all uh, residue you can even go one step further that after you have dipped them in water for say 10 minutes you can sprinkle some white synthetic vinegar on it and then uh, rinse them few times and you can have them Thank you so much, Doctor Sir. Is there any? Are there any more questions? Maybe yeah, we have time. Yeah, Sorry, I have a question to Doctor. And yes, Mr. Amit Shikhani is also here. Sorry, before you begin, can everyone please mute themselves? It's it's very disturbing for uh, the speakers. One uh, question Dr. for Sir, me Sir. also. Uh, Doctor Sir, Salam Alaikum. Uh, thank you for a fantastic session, and uh, it's an eye opener for uh, most of us. I uh, have two things to be asked over here. which is more common in the youth now uh, the first one is like you know uh, having uh, uh, my multivitamin tablets and uh, protein uh, protein shakes and all those things for gymming and uh, number two is uh, the the uh, keto dieting and uh, intermittent fa intermittent fasting these things are like you know you must be uh, must be definitely aware that the youth is going uh, forward for uh, these kind of things now so how good or how bad it is for our health okay well first if you want to take some protein powders if you take them in moderation that is one fourth of the prescribed dose and once in a while that is all right but if you take them for a long period of time so it has some serious consequences and the most serious consequences i have seen on male fertility so it is better if you want to work out and you need some additional protein to include some good protein sources in your diet for example a white chickpeas or hummus is a good option similarly uh, you know like you can take some extra fish you can take some extra eggs and you can take a protein shake or a powder that is only once in a while by once in a while i mean say like once in 7 days and regarding yes one thing i want to ask doctor please what is your opinion about farmy eggs well if the murghi is farmy but but it has been fed right then the farmy egg is right but if the murghi is if the if the chicken is has not been fed right even if it's a free range chicken you know the egg cannot be right so i think you know we need in uh, you can find omega 3 eggs uh, all over the world these are broiler chickens which are fed special diet and they have good amounts of uh, essential fatty acids in uh, in 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 chicken yolk in egg yolk so those can be taken it all depends on what kind of diet a chicken has been fed so what is the importance of nuts uh, almond and nuts and kaju or etc it is also very useful yes very useful they should not be roasted though they should be fresh you should be having fresh fresh nuts not not roasted and uh, i think for men peanuts should be you know like taken in moderation uh, females can take lots of peanuts uh, peanuts are not a male nut but other than that you know every nut is all right what about walnut walnut is also very good hello I, yes wall i'm I asking about something wall something got stuck hello uh, 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 we were asking about walnuts what's the, your opinion on walnuts oh walnuts are fantastic walnuts are absolutely fantastic they are great for memory and you know you are uh, and if somebody who who tends to get angry and work up quickly he should be having having walnuts in morning and somebody who doesn't get good sleep you know uh, he doesn't get deep sleep he should be having few walnuts you know after dinner so so mm -hmm. walnuts are a great great dry fruit to have absolutely fantastic thank you so much dr saab as you can see nobody wants to let you go this was supposed to okay. be a 30 minute yeah, meeting got... you're very very popular everybody loved this session so thank you so much i just want i want to thank uh, you mustafa bhai mustafa bhai i want to thank anil bhai 
for organizing this. And of course, my mom, Rashid Anwar, for, uh, you know, for coming up with all these amazing ideas. And uh, we are definitely, people are asking for more sessions with you. I'm sure you're going to be a regular feature um, at uh, WMO. Uh, I'm going to pass uh, uh, Mr. 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 Chigan is all here. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chigan is here. Mr. M. G. Chigan is also here. The vice oh, president is but... present. You have a word, please. Assalamualaikum, Harun Bhai and everyone. How are you? Everything is okay. Yes, Assalamualaikum. Thank you very much, Doctor Saab. Uh, I heard about uh, some of the information which you are trying to explain to our uh, members. It's very amazing and uh, very knowledgeable. And uh, I hope that this kind of session should be there. Uh, more sessions should be required because this limited time we cannot get so many things from you. And uh, I agree with the host, uh, the, um, the um, MC, that we need more sessions from you. And uh, I appreciate, appreciate all my members that who attended this program. And inshallah, we will try more programs like this, and it will be very beneficial for everyone. Thank you, Ji. I'm glad I could be of uh, help, Ji. Thank you, Ji. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Arun Bhai. Thank you, Anil Bhai. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. The doctor, sir, I would like to end this with a footnote thanking you. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it has been a very impressive and educative pr uh, presentation of the subject of your uh, food for medicine by Dr. Az Azmat Majid. We, on behalf of WMO Middle East, would like to thank Dr. Saab ardently for being so nice to spare so much of time, uh, and uh, we were benefited very much. And I also would like to thank the participants who have gained so much of knowledge so from I, you. I, I, and Jazakallah, we are very happy about it. And uh, wish you all the best, doctor. And uh, uh, hope we can again have some session like this in the future. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, sure. thank you. Thank you, thank thank you. you doctor. Thank you. A special thank you from me, Rashid Anwar. Thank you. You are most, most welcome. You are the driving force behind it all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you don't. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Saab. Thank you very much. Thank you.